Colin Sanders here. This is the History Books Review, where, as the name suggests, I read history books and review them. The book I'm reviewing at the moment is The Eastern Front, 1914-17, by Norman Stone. This is an unusual book in that it was written as an academic book, but it's crossed over to a wider audience. This isn't something that, that happens very often. Usually, if you want a general audience, you need to work at getting them. But somehow Norman Stone seems to have hit the spot on this one. And when you're reading it on a page-by-page -page basis, it's not hard to see why. He's got quite a good, compelling writing style, and he explains all the background to what he's writing about at any particular point in time. So it's, it's quite, a, quite an easy read and quite a good read. I'm a little surprised that it doesn't have more of the drama involved in the great events he's describing. That's something I would, I would have expected to see in a book that's become so popular. But it isn't there, and it, you don't really miss it because it's sort of written from a different perspective. So that's quite good. The thing that did disappoint me is that the overall structure of the book is a bit hazy. So you don't mind when you're reading it on a page by page basis, but it doesn't really tell a very um, compelling story. He gives some good accounts of some campaigns, some very good back background of the logistics and economics, and a bit about the politics. And that's more or less it. It isn't put into the context of the overall First World War. This probably won't trouble you too much if you're already reasonably expert on the First World War and you're just looking to have this bit filled in. Coming at it as someone who's fairly hazy on the First World War, I found it a bit frustrating. In particular, there are two obvious things that the narrative is leading up to. One is the treaty between the Germans and the Russians, and we get very little detail on that. And the other, of course, is the Russian Revolution, which is a major world event, the implications of which we're still working through at the moment. And that is given almost no coverage at all. Uh, the story of the Eastern Front is, is, is quite an interesting one. It was obviously a, a war fought on a massive scale. And from the Germans' point of view, they were also already engaged on a war on a massive scale on the Western Front as well. And it's quite impressive the way the Germans overcame their lack of resources uh, by using superior organisation. It's a, bit, it's a bit of a stereotype about the Germans, but it's, it certainly rings true in this case. Um, so that's sort of confirmation of an existing uh, prejudice. Another existing prejudice that I personally had, I don't know if this is a common one, was that the Austrians were spectacularly incompetent. And this is borne out in spades by this book. Uh, the Austrian general staff uh, come across as blithering idiots who shouldn't really be allowed in charge of a scout outing, let alone fighting a major world war. Uh, the other preconception I had was that the Russians were also disorganised, backward and not really uh, fit for fighting a major world war. And I think that's a prejudice which is very much reinforced by the fact that, they had, that the Russian state collapsed and the um, Russians had to pull out of the First World War before it really finished. Uh, but that isn't really borne out by the story of the fighting. The Russians actually put up an extremely good fight in the First World War. They had at least one very good general and their equipment was not as backward as my prejudice uh, led me to believe, though apparently this was a prejudice that was shared by the Russian commanders themselves, who put an enormous effort into purchasing uh, equipment from abroad under the impression it would be better than their own. Uh, what let the Russians down uh, was very much uh, organisation, and in fact this was sort of very much highlighted because when the Germans took over the Russian railway road system, they managed to make it work more efficiently than the Russians did themselves. So there were weaknesses in organisation, and the although they weren't as backward as I'd 
believe when I started reading the book, they, they still weren't as well down the industrialized path as the Germans were. So they, they were suffering there. And this led to quite a lot of the kinds of problems that would later beset the Soviet Union, which is quite interesting. Uh, one of the big mysteries to me at any rate is why the Soviet Union persisted with its um, ultra Marxist economic policies for so long into its history. Um, I mean, they, they abandoned, abandoned the democratic ideas of socialism fairly on. So why not also abandon the bits that were holding them back? I still don't know the answer to that one. But one possible explanation is that most of the problems that beset the Soviet Union were already there before the Soviet Union started. So it perhaps isn't as obvious to the Russians that their problems were down to socialist planning as it would be to the outsiders. It's even possible that outsiders haven't quite got the picture straight either. Maybe there is just something about the state of Russia that gives some problems that don't arise elsewhere rather than being unique to socialism. Who knows? In any case, um, it's quite an interesting perspective looking at it from this period just before the revolution, which would have informed the mindset of the original Bolsheviks when they took over. Uh, so, all in all, it's a fun book to read, an interesting book to read, and one that's very illuminating and tells you a lot of stuff. Just a little bit frustrating that it doesn't come to a satisfying end point. It just sort of gets to the end of the material it's covering and then just sort of stops without any real obvious st uh, stopping point in the story. So, a good book, well worth a read, and I'd more recommend it to you if you're very much into the First World War. Less interesting if you're just uh, looking for a book to read to bring up to speak on the First World War, because it's a bit hazy on that. Thanks for listening.